take you to the broadcast of It's Time with Reverend Nathaniel W. Martin. Here's Reverend Martin. Thank you, Dr. Blackwell. And uh, let me greet you on this new year. My name is Reverend Nathaniel Wayne Martin. I'm the pastor of the New Life Institutional Baptist Church here in the city of Los Angeles. And uh, we're located at 8916 South Main Street. And uh, we're worshiping with the Shiloh, our sister church, the Shiloh Missionary Christian Church. We invite you to come and worship with us at any and all of our services, uh, especially on Wednesday nights when we have a uh, prayer night, prayer fellowship night, uh, which does not mean that you shouldn't come to church on Sunday, because the Bible tells us to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Wear your mask and social distance, safely distance, but by all means, keep up the assembly and keep up uh, the fellowship. The name of this offering or this presentation which you are viewing or listening to is entitled, It's Time. And what is it time for? It is always time for social justice. It is always time, as Dr. King said many times, it is always time to do right. It was always right to do uh, right. And surely in this nation, at this hour, at this time, we need to be doing that which is right. Let judgment, justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. Our, our marching orders for our uh, It's Time broadcast are based upon the reparation scripture found in Deuteronomy chapter 15, beginning the reading at verse number 12, which says simply, And if thy brother, an Hebrew man or an Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him or her go free from thee. And when thou sendest them away, or sendest them out free from thee, thou shalt not, notice, thou shalt not let them go away empty, but thou shalt thoroughly furnish them, liberally furnish them out of thy flock and out of thy floor and out of thy wine press of that which the Lord thy God hath given thee shalt thou give unto them. And the operative word on the end of that uh, verse is give, not rent, not lease, not sell, no, give, not let borrow, no, give, with no expectation that they are ever going to give it back. You are to share with your brothers and with your sisters who have been in or who are now coming up out of uh, slavery. Amen. The, the Bible never uh, recognized people as being only slaves. No, it does not do such thing. That's uh, a Western European uh, conceptualization. It speaks of people as being uh, a bondman or a bondwoman. Yes, uh, but it also speaks of what? Freedom, freedom, freedom over and over again. Uh, slavery in Scripture was never to be perpetual. Uh, the uh, uh, slavery in scripture did not follow the status of the mother as slavery was uh, practiced uh, on the European, European as the European model of uh, slavery or the exemplar or paradigm of European slavery was, uh, of course, refined and further uh, uh, cultivated and degenerated into chattel slavery, a personal person because my personal uh, property, my personal movable property, uh, that it is my property and I can do with property as I will. No, uh, the Bible recognized no such uh, concept as that. Uh, well, that come from the pit of hell itself. But then, of course, our nation, unfortunately, was based upon a contradiction. It was based upon a big lie and now this lie is turning around to uh, begin to uh, attack our nation as though, uh, as uh, uh, Malcolm X said years ago, 
for which he was put out of the nation of Islam, uh, the chickens have coming are coming home uh, to roost. God prepare, uh, requires rather that we follow Micah six and eight, do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly uh, with our God. That is our uh, marching orders. And notice, as God said in the scripture that I quoted to you from Deuteronomy uh, chapter 15, that you were uh, to help your sister or your brother recover from their enslavement. Uh, not to view them as slaves, but to view them as the formerly enslaved. And uh, as Dr. Tan, excuse me, I call him a doctor, uh, as the uh, the journalist and the author Tanahasi Coates uh, has placed within the uh, lexicon the statement the people formerly enslaved and so that is how we talk about uh, slavery in the United States not because the people were slaves before they were stolen from their land and crammed like sardines in the bowels of some awful smelling. Uh, ship named the good ship Jesus or the ship of Zion. No, they were free people. They were great people. They developed uh, the concepts of geometry and algebra and literature and languages long before the European ventured from uh, the caves. And uh, we time to uh, to put, as it were, uh, history to the narrative back in its proper. Uh, order so that we can uh, look at things as things are and as things ought to be rather than uh, as the miseducation of many of us has uh, uh, indoctrinated us to uh, believe. Yes, I use the word indoctrinated because we have all swallowed one huge uh, lie after another based upon race. When we come to find out uh, that in the uh, the uh, bio biological scheme of things, in the DNA helix, you cannot find race in the DNA. Uh, you cannot find a white man, you cannot find a black man in the uh, original genetics of, of, uh, of uh, biology. And so we have uh, believed a huge lie. We have based our lives, lives and our, our, our education and our policies and our practices on that lie. And now we must redo, undo, and transform, as the scripture says, be not conform, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Surely here in the United States of America, it is time that you renewed your mind. And so that is one of the aims of uh, this particular uh, broadcast, 30 minutes though it be, is to put out some truths for all of us. Put, uh, as uh, Dr. Karen Hunter says on her uh, program, we put down some breadcrumbs and uh, hopefully that you will find your way uh, to begin uh, the great task of undoing uh, the miseducation that uh, is still being perpetuated in, in the curriculums of many of our schools. And so we're trying to help you be educated in spite of your schooling. Don't let your school destroy your education. Uh, keep studying, keep reading, keep learning, keep exposing yourself uh, to good literature, good lectures, uh, and it will be so beneficial to you. It's not what you learned while you were in school is what you have learned since you got out of school. I was listening to one of our uh, deacons the other night, and uh, he was saying that uh, the, uh, oh yes, the white folks rule America. It's, God gave this land to America because of, of, of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. Nothing can be further from the truth. Why Ephraim and Manasseh? were a half tribe, half tribe of Ephraim, half tribe of Manasseh. And neither of them, mind you, was a European. So where do we get this concept that everybody in the Bible is white? 
why there's no such thing. Everybody in the Bible is black, but not everybody in the Bible is white. I wish I could get an amen on that, and I hope somebody will go back and look at their Bible. But you have been sold a big lie, my friends, if you believe what uh, the portrayal of, of uh, Jesus and of, of the disciples and of Mary and Joseph uh, as being a Caucasian or being a European featured, because the, the, uh, the, the world did not begin in Europe. The, the world began in, in Africa, even the white folks. Talk about the darkest part of Africa. Well, that's where the world, that's where civilization started. And uh, it's time to set the record straight. Civilization did not start in Europe. Europe had no civilization to bring to Africa. What Europe brought to Africa was darkness and, and uh, ignorance and racism. And uh, they have, and, and the, the getting the gunpowder from the uh, Chinese and then refining that gunpowder uh, manufacture. As they say, he, he who has the gunpowder is going to win the war. And that is what uh, occurred uh, to our people when we were set upon by these invaders from, from Europe. And quite naturally, uh, to the victor goes the spoils. Uh, the, the victor is the right is the one who's going to write history. So it is not uh, unusual looking at it from a sociological standpoint that we are dealing with this so many myths and uh, half truths and downright lies. Uh, but one of the things that uh, Donald Trump has allowed you and I to see is just how a lie can be perpetuated. And how many people can believe a lie? And if you keep on telling that big lie, uh, long enough people start uh, believing that lie. Eighty million, excuse me, seventy-four million people believe the lie that Donald Trump put out there. Well, on a worldwide scale, the whole world is working, laboring under uh, a, a demented uh, veil of lies, and uh, the Bible wisely tells us that the end shall not come until that man of sin shall be exposed. So if we do nothing else on this program, we're going to expose that man of sin, that liar uh, that has put this covering of, of uh, darkness over the face of the entire world. It is not in vain that the Bible speaks that the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. And they that dwell in the region of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shine. And every one of God's ministers and evangelists and preachers and priests and prophets, so called prophets, uh, and pastors has that obligation laid upon him to or her to bring forth the light of truth into this dark world. As uh, Dr. Uh, Jeremiah Wright says, get the facts right and then tell it right. And that is what we are, are, are laboring uh, uh, to do. I, I don't like to get off into uh, preaching mode because of the fact that uh, uh, we're trying to, to point you in the way of social action and social justice. And a lot of time when you get off into preaching, you, you, you lose your, 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 your way because you become exalted and uplifted uh, in the spirit. We want to try to keep our focus uh, on on uh, what the Father is teaching us, what the Spirit is showing us. And uh, yes, I believe in the Spirit. Yes, I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I believe that the Lord does speak to us, and He will cause us to speak in other languages, that He will bring to our uh, remembrance all things whatsoever He has uh, told us. And it is for you and me, uh, to take the things of God and to, to open those things up uh, to God's people and look at the, the, the activities uh, on the national level that have caused everyone to tremble and shake. Remember in the 59th chapter of Isaiah, there's a very obscure verse, but it says one thing. And this is what I want you to remember when you look at the people climbing up on the walls and up on the, the roof and invading the uh, 
sanctity of uh, the Capitol and going all off into the Senate chambers and the uh, House of Representatives chamber. Remember, the Bible says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a, a standard against him. Things may uh, look as though the hordes of evil are going to prevail, but hold on to the word of God. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up a standard against him. Uh, in the 59th chapter of Isaiah, let's just look down uh, at that verse because of the fact of its uh, application to uh, our current and present uh, conditions and circumstances. Shall we? It doesn't hurt us to look at the word of God. Okay. All right. Uh, the Lord is a great God. Isn't that right? And uh, I trust in God. Here we go. It is in verse number 19. So it says, you feel the name of the Lord from the rising of the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. That's the word of the God for the people of God. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. They came over the wall. They came over the bike racks. They came over the tops of the, the police. They overran the police. Huh? They overran uh, the Capitol Guard uh, with the complicity, truly, of those uh, who were charged with the duty to protect the, 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 the uh, senators and representatives. That was collusion, certainly. That was betrayal, definitely. But don't worry, because when the enemy, the Bible says, shall come in, like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. Rest in God's word. Live in God's word. Huh? Put that word in your heart, as David said. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Uh, you cannot do social justice and social activism if you don't believe in the word of God because there are too many contrary and uh, uh, too many paradoxical uh, occurrences, some downright contradictory seeming uh, actions, activities, and events and personalities. We had a four years of darkness with this fellow and thank God that he has finally exposed himself to the point where even his own white people, he turned against them. All of that conversation about law and order, and yet he led his people to what? Attack the police, to attack the law, to attack order. Now, wasn't that rather demonic? Wasn't that devilish? Wasn't that a contradiction in terms? You, the highest officer in the land, Donald Trump, supposed to be uphold, protect, and defend uh, the Constitution of the United States of America, you swore that, so help you God, upon a Bible, upon uh, his, his uh, uh, inauguration back there in 2016, and he have failed in that he has betrayed that trust, and he must uh, be exposed, he must re be revealed for the imposter, for the fraud, for the fake that he truly is. Yes, he's a fraud. He's a fake. Donald Trump is an imposter, just like that hair on the top of his head. Why, my brothers and my sisters, don't be afraid of Donald Trump. Trust in the Lord. Remember, Donald Trump is just a, a symbol because the scriptures uh, tell us over in the New Testament that you have to look behind Donald Trump. The scripture says, for we wrestle not uh, against flesh and blood. Donald Trump is just flesh and blood. But what you're wrestling with is against principalities and powers, of the, against the rulers of the darkness uh, of this world. I don't have time to turn to that 
right now, but you know what that is. Uh, that scripture there, uh, where it tells you about putting on the whole armor uh, of God, but it, it justifies that, but it tells you that you are not fighting a, a flesh and blood person. See, Donald Trump is gone, but that evil that he represents is still there. And that is what you are going to have to keep uh, aware of. Uh, I was listening to Cornel West. He was talking about growing, uh, becoming weary because it looked like every time uh, that America gets in trouble, he calls on the black man. And the black man pulls us out, helps us get out of trouble. And then we kick the black man to the curb like they did for Christmas addicts there in the American Revolution. Uh, and like they did to the uh, black people that fought the uh, Civil War, the 200,000 uh, black soldiers that fought in the Civil War. And they kicked them out with no 40 acres and no view, nothing. No payment for those 246 years of unrequited toil. Quite to the contrary, they paid the slave owner, the slave master, uh, the dealer, the slave broker, but they did not pay the slave. Don't tell me hard work pays off. <laughs> you, <laughs> who, could, who could have worked harder than the slave? And did that slave get paid? Neither he nor she. Uh, so just hard work alone uh, doesn't mean a thing in this country, and it doesn't mean a thing in the world. Don't wear yourself out for nothing. you got to set the condition where what you are expending, your, your labor, the work, brings into you a dividend and a reward. Not in heaven, right here on the good land that the Lord thy God gives thee. Uh, some wit, he was a black wit, but he, he made a very coaching point. I can't think of his name, I'm not going to try to find it. Uh, but he said, why should, all, why should the white boys have all the fun? The white boys got the best of the gold, the best of the silver, the best of the petroleum and the oil and the, and the all of the minerals that are in the, the earth and in the world. Uh, they got the best of that right now. And they got heaven when they die. But why, therefore, is the black man denied uh, some gold and some silver to pay his bill? Why is he denied access to the oil? Why, you go over to, to Nigeria and look how poorly the people are living but look at all of that oil being taken up out of the earth. Not to benefit the people of Nigeria, but to benefit the people over in Britain and France and the United States. So then uh, the question must be asked, who's getting all of the resources and who's getting the benefit? Why, well, it's certainly not yours truly. And I bet you're not getting a lot of the benefits of it. And so... Uh, there must be, as Dr. King said, a, a, a radical revolution of values. There, there must be a transformation. Uh, in fact, Dr. King said one must look uh, at the Jericho Road and realize not only do you need protection on the Jericho Road, but that the whole Jericho Road system has got to be changed so that the danger, the peril, uh, and the evil that lurks in every corner of the Jericho Road of Life will be diminished, reduced, revealed, and thus eradicated because evil doesn't like to come to the light. It comes, it does its works uh, in the darkness. Keep in mind, uh, my brothers and my sisters, that you are living in these days that the Bible calls the last days. Yes, the last days. I heard Dr. Uh, Carl Anderson attempting to uh, interpret a book, a chapter in the book of Revelation about the red horse, and he likened it to the red states and the, the red uh, 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 confederate flag and uh, all of that to say we are in the time of the red horse. Well, he may be right, but then he more likely he's wrong because he's not a Bible scholar, no way. And uh, then none of us are, 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 are able to seemingly to discern what the Bible is saying about the black, uh, the black horse and the white horse and the red horse and everything of that nature, uh, simply because I haven't seen the application of the white horse and the, and the uh, uh, black horse with the balances in his hand. 
But of course, one can make a, 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 an argument that these red states and these red flags, huh, are, are, are symbolic or uh, symptomatic of that uh, uh, red horse without getting too far off into the bushes. Remember, no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation of men of God. Uh, spoke as they were moved by the Spirit of God. No prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. So you got to follow, you got to ask God and uh, let God reveal, I got my five minute signal, uh, what He is saying in the Word. But one can hardly look at the things that are coming on the earth with this uh, pandemic, with this plague, uh, with the deaths. Uh, and, and our economy being strangled and uh, people out of work and uh, the homeless on the streets uh, uh, proliferating and uh, increasing and multiplying and people looking to the future with greater uncertainty than they ever have before. But yet you got this one-tenth of one percent that is gobbling up more wealth Gobbling up more money unto themselves, fuel more and more money in fewer and fewer hands uh, around this country and around this world. You cannot help but look and see that the Bible is indeed uh, moving uh, us into a period where we can see that there is coming a huge uh, cataclysm, a, a huge uh, climax that is uh, unavoidable. It's unavoidable because the lifestyle. And the agenda of the rich and of the greedy and of the wealthy have brought us uh, to this sad uh, denouement, as you will. And so, as I get, as I wrap up, as I close, as I get ready to tell you uh, that we will talk again on these things, I encourage you to look at how perfectly the 59th uh, chapter of Isaiah identifies. Uh, these days and times in which you and I are living. It, we, feet run to evil, uh, make haste to shed innocent hands. Feet run to evil, and hands make haste to shed innocent blood. Uh, thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, and no judgment in their going, no peace in their way. While we are in those days right now, uh, brothers, uh, we are reaping the the terrible, terrible consequences of all of the systemic racism that has uh, uh, permeated this nation and indeed the parts of the entire world. There is hope if we lay hold on hope. Uh, there's a better day if we push toward that better day. Not incrementally, but completely a great push. Not to get just a little bit of better, no, but to get all of the better. Remember Dr. King said one time, people ask us, what do we want? Tell them that we want it all, we want it here, and we want it now. And that is what we have to uh, 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 press on toward. And my brothers and my sisters who are laboring on this thankless job uh, where you barely can put two 50 cent pieces together to buy a tank of gas. Uh, remember, that if these people don't want to give you no better hours, don't want to give you no better uh, 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 financial salary, they're saying they really don't want to pay. They want all the labor out of you, but they don't want to pay you. And listen to me, I tell you again, as I always say, if they don't want to pay you, why the heck are you working for them? God bless you and God keep you. Here's our prayer. We out of here, Doc. Just say thank you, Lord. Thank you.